The Bothy Storytelling Podcast is a member of the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB. Welcome to the Bothy Storytelling Podcast. I'm your host, Callum Lycan. And here we are with another episode of the Bothy Storytelling Podcast. And as you may have heard, the exciting news has already been revealed. For I have recently been accepted onto the Alberta Podcast Network. And that is sponsored by ATB. So, this is amazing, considering I've only kind of eight episodes in and they've welcomed me into the fold. And there's a huge wealth of other podcasts on that network. And you will be hearing about them throughout my shows because it allows me now to focus my podcast recommendation on some of the podcasts that we actually work with. But more about that later. Ah, storytelling and performance. It's a an interesting occupation. And you know what? If I... Many years ago, when I got into this field, had realised kind of all the ups and downs of it. Sometimes I wonder, would I still be doing what I'm doing? Would I have actually driven myself forward into this career? And the honest answer is probably yes. I probably still would be doing what I'm doing. I would just be a lot more prepared for what I'm doing. Because there's so many kind of interesting things, ups and downs, highs and lows that happen when you're a performer. I don't know how many performers are listening to this show, but they will understand because a lot of people, I think, when they think about performers, when they think about entertainers, they see what they see on the stage and they don't realise what's gone into it and also all the struggles and challenges that you face in the background. I think, to be honest, when I talk about my business, I'm looking at about maybe 20% of it is performance and 80% of it is what I call hustle. Constantly getting out there, trying to meet people, phoning, emailing, just trying to get business. But then there's the other sides of it. And one of the reasons I've actually been a wee bit delayed this month is because of those other sides the ups and downs. Oh, you get into a mindset when you're a performer and you're working away and you're on stage. And when you're doing your performances, you get this huge burst of adrenaline, of joy, of pleasure, of happiness. And then when you come off stage, you just plummet. Now, that's not so bad if you know you're going to be on stage fairly soon. But what happens when you're not on stage? What happens when you're going months and months maybe without events because of, say, for example, Canada? God damn you, country, you started snowing again today. This sort of environment changes all my views on performance because in Scotland, even though it was damp and cold, I'd still be out doing stuff. Here is a little bit more limited. It slows down over the winter months and it makes it incredibly challenging to get out there. And I'm sure the local Canadian performers at this point will be sniggering at me, you know, the Scots guy struggling to get out in the winter, but it happens. Now, as for myself, I have just gone through what I call a period of glum. Not depression, not being down, just glum. You cannot get your mind focused. You cannot get driven. You wake up in the morning and it's like walking through fog. You know you've got stuff to do because I I do. I've got loads to do. I've got recordings. I've got editing. I've got emails to send. I have got so much work that needs to be done. But for the last week and a half, I have literally woken up and just went, (sighs) and my body's just not allowed me to do it. My mind has been so befuddled and confused and it's been driving me insane because I know it's happening, but fighting through that fog is so difficult. And a lot of people have attributed it to the weather here as well. I'm hearing a lot of people saying a similar thing um, along the lines of the sad thing that they get, you know, the lack of sunlight. And apparently Canada, certain areas of Canada are bad for it, particularly when you get the longer winter 
Some people say this is normal, but most people are saying, no, it's gone on a bit longer than it usually should. And as I say today, we're back to snow, grey and freezing fog throughout the city. So no wonder some of us are starting to get that kind of sad effect with lack of sunlight. But for the last week and a half, oh, every morning I'm up, nine o'clock. I get up, I'm raring, shower, sit down on my computer I'm going to record, I'm going to do this, I'm going to work, I'm going to send emails, and then I'm just staring blankly at my computer. Or could it be the fact that Facebook is now starting to warp our minds? Maybe it's they're controlling us through our laptops or computers, because I just generally find myself staring at Facebook posts of cats and tins of soup and whatever else is on there, whatever nonsense appears. I try and avoid it as much as possible, but it happens. So, for a week and a half, I've been going, yeah, I need to record, I've got more podcasts to put out, I've got this, I've got this exciting news, and every time I sit down, I am just so lacklustre, without passion or energy, and completely devoid of thought, like some sort of like zombie, but not quite dead yet. So it's been a real challenge the last couple of weeks just to get things going and then you know when you start to push through it when you start to see the other side of it and you start to contact people it's amazing because you start to build up again your energy comes back you're you're popping your vitamins and your vitamin d's and your vitamin c's and all that just to get yourself back online and all of a sudden it starts to come and you know what in a last half a dozen days I've done multiple interviews. Oh, yeah, they're all coming to this podcast soon. I have been working my backside off to make sure that I've got planning ahead of time for this show so that you folks get the viewing and not the viewing, get the listening viewing. Gosh, trust me, this is not the face for TV. This is this is definitely the right medium for me. But you will get the listening treats that you deserve and they will be coming up shortly. But yeah. For the last week and a half, I have just been so lacking in focus. And I know this happens to performers. I'm not just going to say it myself because I know I've spoken to many performers. How do we avoid it? How do we get through it? You know what? (laughs) This is going to sound terrible. You guys are the only way we get through this. We seem to have a very warped sense of the world. We need the admiration of people. I cannot sustain my existence without performing and entertaining people. When I say the admiration, I don't mean that in an egotistic, ah, yeah, I do, forget it. I'm an, I'm an egomaniacal swine at times, but I don't just mean it in that sense. We love to entertain. We love to give joy to people. So the only way for us to kind of work through these processes is to keep performing continually, whether it's on a weekly or a monthly basis. I've gone through a small period of, <laughs> do you know, it's going to sound pathetic, it's been about two, three weeks since I've been on a stage, okay? That's how little time it's been. And I plummeted hard into the doldrums of morbid thought and fog and just not being able to get motivated so what we actually need as performers is to actually entertain and the worst bit was you know what it didn't even dawn on me until this very moment that i'm speaking to you what i'm doing today hopefully is entertaining this is performing to you guys this is giving some love out there so here's me being sitting in complete mental fog kind of struggling to do anything and i could have just been doing my podcast and sending out joy and happiness and hopefully some entertaining thoughts. This ramble, for example. God, you know, this is a dark, dark moment for me having to give so much intimacy of my life away. But you know what? I'm going to roll with it because it needs to be said. There are performers out there that do struggle. Some people don't get through these moments, unfortunately, and go the other way. Thankfully, I've never been that bad. And I know none of my close friends have been. But gosh... The need to perform, the need to entertain is definitely something that drives every performer. And when we don't have it, oh, I know the guys I've spoken to, this kind of glum takes over us when we're not able to do what we love doing. It's also another side to it as well, because this is what we do for a living. So when we cannot make money to support our families and loved ones, it really does have an impact on us as well. But as I say, now... 
I'm back to normal. I'm back up in my happy, clappy self. You know, the glum is over. It kicks in every so often. I'm coming into my performance period as well, which is great. Once the snow stops, God, I'm going to rant about this forever. This is going to be one of my biggest bugbears. I have decided to move to Canada, live in a country which I love with my beautiful partner. And um, yeah, yeah, and it snows. I've come to a country where it snows and it's so pretty. Don't get me wrong. It's beautiful. Oh, the first time you see the snow when you come from, say, Scotland. And it's so fluffy and white and gorgeous. Oh, it just makes your heart leap. After the second time of shoveling, you're like, God damn it, could this stuff just go? And that's kind of how I feel. But also, just simply because it's gone on too long now, this is now about uh, five months of constant kind of on and off snows. Anyway, I am feeling uh, much better. I'm back to my happy clappy self, uh, getting out there. My performance season is coming up, as I've just said, and I've got loads about to happen. You know what? I'm so excited. We've got loads of Viking events. Yeah, I'm part of a Viking reenactment society. I'll tell you about that in another podcast, maybe interview some of the guys. So I get to go out and do storytelling with them. I am the scald of certainly our group and most of the uh, Alberta groups that would appear. So I get to do my storytelling, dress as a Viking, and we're about to get kicked off into some serious combat time. So we get to do our combat displays. But on top of that, I've got a few events, medieval fairs coming up. Oh, they're so much fun. I have libraries. Okay, Calgary is an amazing city, but I've never managed to get into a library there. Canada is quite a vast country. I have been booked in libraries that are effectively over 500 kilometres away. So I've got like five hour, six hour, seven hour drives to some of these because of the roads, etc. to go and do library visits, which is amazing. But just really weird when you think about all that drive. But I'm so looking forward to them. I'm up in... uh, Slave Lake, I'm up at Bonneville, I'm all over the place, it's going to be amazing. And then, there's a couple of biggies coming up which I'm so excited about, not just the Cochrane Medieval Day that I love doing, Uh, we're going out to Gimli this year, the Manitoba, the big Viking festival, that is going to be phenomenal. I'm going to be doing some storytelling and maybe some talks on the Scaldic traditions, that's going to be great, and then, haha, I just got confirmation, I'm going to be at the Edmonton Fringe. Now, I don't think I ever stated on my podcast that I had stopped doing the fringes for a while. I found a few things that were kind of frustrating me. Uh, The price of them were going up uh, a huge way. There was a huge amount of work involved and you weren't able to work really out with your normal shows. You were too busy running about flyering and promoting the show. But then the worst bit... Oh God, this is a professional suicide about to happen, ladies and gents. Reviewers. Yep. I hate them. I know those guys are there to do a job. Well, are they? Who knows? I I often wonder. But unfortunately, the reviewers that I've discovered uh, over here are not professional reviewers. Bar one. I've met the most lovely professional reviewer who was called back and he was doing the Calgary Fringe and he was amazing and his write-ups were perfect because what he did is he didn't give you a star rating, which I always think is rather insulting. He gave you an honest review, which was lovely and usually quite positive and if there was a negative in it, he would kind of sandwich it, you know, the positive, negative, positive and usually finish with a little comment because... He was also very much aware of the audience rather than just the show. And he would make a statement like, well, it wasn't my cup of tea, but I did see that everyone else thoroughly enjoyed it, so it could be worth giving a go. And to me, that's perfect for any reviewer to do. But most of the reviewers I've discovered are hired just for the festival by organisation, so they're not really uh, trained professionals. Some of them might be training to be professionals, but usually what you get, and hey, I'll just give you a few examples. I had a a young lady once in my show. She may be in her mid-twenties, and she sat there on her mobile phone yawning at the side. I want you to imagine that I had a an audience. It was a smaller show. Everyone was in front of me in an L-shaped room. She sat at the far peripheral of my vision, away from every other member of audience, which meant I had to keep turning continuously. 
things like that I find frustrating because reviewers don't seem to be feel that they're part of the show sometimes. And I believe that if you are coming to review a show, you need to give as much commitment to that show as the performer gives to his audience. So that's kind of why I decided to step away from the fringes for a while, mainly because I wanted to also focus on myself, work on my shows. And I realised certainly in Canada, I can't just go with a tra traditional storytelling show. I've got to make it a more theatrical-based storytelling concept over here because that's what they're looking for. But I had great fun at the fringes, uh, ups and downs with the reviews, but you know what? I generally always sold out, so I was quite happy. The reviews, even if it was a negative, never really affected me because, hey, the general public are sensible and they know reviewers are odd creatures, to say the least. There, ladies and gentlemen, I have just committed professional suicide. I'm going to need your support for the rest of my days. But the reason I stepped out of the fringes was really just because I needed time. I thought I needed to develop and I wanted to focus on going into schools and libraries, going back to a different style, style of storytelling that I've been wanting to focus on again. And then I got a contact from the Edmonton Fringe asking if I wanted to do the Fringe, but no, not the normal Fringe, the Kids Fringe. And I said yes because this is exactly what I need, a children's festival to help me get back into that routine and hopefully promote me on to further children's festivals, which are all over Canada. Yeah, I know, if anyone's heard me storytell, you're probably thinking, Callum, you're the least child-friendly storyteller that I've ever heard. Not because I'm abusive or rude or swear, just because I have told to more adults than children over my time. And that's something I want to readdress, because when I first started... I was working in the schools all the time and that's where I learned my trade working with the kids, which was great fun. So, this year is looking great for me. I've got so many things coming up. My performance season is really looking great. But then what happens after that? Well, I'll be doing these podcasts throughout that season as well. And then come the winter months, I'm just going to have to need all the love from you guys constantly to keep me from getting glum. Because performing, certainly what I do, is a very lonely life. You know, I've got my beautiful partner, but when I'm out at events, I'm usually by myself. So when I'm at the fringe, I'm there by myself. And yes, there's other performers about, but quite a lot of them either work in a group or they work with people. So therefore, they've always got their little kind of party around them and even the solo performers certainly most of them know each other because I'm a newbie in Canada so I'm kind of a newer entity to most of the performers over here so I found quite often when I do an event I'm kind of left by myself and it can get very lonely because there you are surrounded by people you're surrounded by performers but you're the odd one out particularly because a lot of people still don't quite understand storyteller Storytellers are a very unusual craft. You know, a lot of people don't know what it is. They still believe it's someone reading from a book. So when I kind of tell, hey, I'm a storyteller, even performers kind of look at me like, what? Sorry? They're a bit bamboozled by what's happening and what I'm saying. So it can be a very lonely life. And then, of course, this side of things. Hey, guys, you know, I'm sitting in a room in my uh, basement in my house in my sound booth talking to a microphone. I know you're going to listen to this. I'm hoping you're going to enjoy it. But I'm by myself talking in a microphone. And when I finish recording this, I'm going to edit it by myself. Post it by myself. Then I'm going to have to... Uh, do emails and admin and other bits and bobs and it's all going to be by myself so the reality is quite a lot of the performance life is very lonely i have friends and family around me but when i'm doing my job i'm by myself i can be down in this basement for eight hours a day i'll maybe get the occasional high hug and kiss but that is pretty much it i have to focus and stay down here it's an incredibly strange existence and you're probably saying well why don't you just go get an office job and i think to myself why would you want to do that have you worked in an office do you work in an office are hideous things i used to i used to be a 
a banker. I used to be a retail manager. I used to work in sales and recruitment. Oh, gosh, all those office jobs drove me insane. That's why I do this, even though it can be a bit lonely. But that's why we have loved ones, friends and family, and we get by. And that's why we have wonderful audiences that when we do get out there live, you guys are supportive. You come and see us and we have great fun with you. So it is a lonely life at times, but you do get the ups and downs. But for any performers that really suffers from the glums, as I call them, and that loneliness, you know what? We're all here. Drop me an email, bothytales at gmail.com, because I'm happy to meet new performers. And hey, if you want to be interviewed on the podcast, let me know when we can connect a time to chat. Because just because we work in a lonely industry doesn't mean we all need to be alone all the time. You know what? We make of it what we can. Performers, bankers, recruitment consultants, whatever. We all do our thing. We've got our loved ones. We create our lives and we do what we can to make it fun and enjoyable for everyone. And as I uh, make that statement, I actually think of a wee story. God, I haven't told this for a long time. The tailor and the button. And it starts in a far-off kingdom. And they're the king and the queen and the princess and all the courtiers. They're the finest dressed in all the land. Their clothes are beautiful and splendid, and it's all because of one man. The court tailor. And one day the king calls his tailor to the court and is absolutely shocked, because there is this bedraggled-looking man walking before him. The king looks down at his tailor, disgusted by the way he looks. The king is furious. How dare you come before me in such a shambolic outfit? We are so splendid, and you... You look like a beggar from the street. But the tailor explains that he's so busy looking after everybody in the kingdom that he has no time for himself. He cannot make any clothes for himself. Well, the king looks down and calls upon his servants away to the stores and bring the finest cloth you can find. And in no time, they've arrived back, and the king presents it to the tailor. For all the hard work that you have done, I give you this to make an outfit for yourself. But I tell you this now, if ever you appear before us in such a state, I will have your head. Well, the old tailor looks down at this beautiful cloth, it's shimmering, the way the sun bounces off it, and he is in awe. He thanks the king and tells him this will not happen again. And that night he returns to his little workshop, and he looks at the material and lays it out and marvels at it, and looks long and hard and thinks to himself, yes, I can do something with this. And that night, he cuts and sews and trims until eventually he makes for himself the finest coat, a long flowing coat reaching all the way down to his ankles. And the next morning when he goes out, the whole town are amazed by his skill. They're in awe by his talent. And he goes up to the king And the king cannot believe what he's looking at. This marvellous coat from his tailor. And the king is happy. But the tailor wears the coat and wears it and wears it and wears it until he wears it out. And one night he takes the coat off and places it down and looks at it. And it's a bit more thread worn and there's holes in the material. It's a little bit worn. And as he looks at this long coat, he thinks long and hard. And it comes to him, yes, I can do something with this. 
and he cuts and shapes and trims and sews until he's made himself a fine blazer. And the next day he goes out and the town is absolutely amazed. They cheer and roar at his talent. He heads up to the king and the king is absolutely overwhelmed with happiness. The queen is filled with joy. For she looks at this tailor and his fine creation and his talent. And the tailor wears the coat and wears the coat, and wears the coat, until he wears it out. And one night he takes it off, and looks at the material, stitches are loose, buttons are popped, there's holes in the pockets, and he thinks to himself, hmm, and then it comes to him, yes, I can do something with this. And he cuts and sews and trims and he neatens it up until eventually he's made a beautiful vest for himself. And the next day he goes out and he wears the vest and the town are absolutely joyous. They're having a celebration for him. He goes up to the kingdom and the king and the queen and the princess are absolutely in disbelief. How talented this tailor is and the tailor wears it and wears it and wears it until he wears it out and one night he takes off his vest and looks at it and oh what a sorry looking thing it is but as he looks at the material it comes to him yes i can still do something with this and he cuts, and he trims, and he shapes, until he makes himself a fine bonnet, a hat for his head, and he steps out the next morning, and oh my goodness, the celebrations are doubled, the cheers fill the heavens as the town celebrates his talent, he goes up to the court, and the king, the queen, the princess, and all the courtiers are overwhelmed Tears rolling down their face at seeing the talent of this tailor. And he wears it, and he wears it, and he wears it, until he wears it out. And he takes that hat and he places it down, and he looks long and hard at it. <sighs> it's a sorry looking thing. The threads are loose, the hat's lost its shape, but as he looks at it he thinks... Yes, I can still do something with this. So he cuts and he shapes and he makes from it a fine bow tie. For this was when bow ties were cool. And he goes out the next day and let me tell you, there's a carnival held in his honour. The whole town cannot believe his talents. He goes up to the king and the king and the queen and the princess and the courtiers and the servants, none of them know what to say. They just look, their jaws wide, their eyes beaming with absolute admiration for his talent. But he wears it, and he wears it, and he wears it until he wears it out. And the old tailor looks down at this bow tie, if you can even call it a bow tie, a loose shabby bit of material it is, and he stares at it with sadness in his eyes until it comes to him. He looks at the material and he thinks to himself, yes, I can still do something with this. And he cuts and he shapes until... He's made himself a button, a little material button. And the next day he goes out. Fireworks, celebrations, feasting, drinking. The whole town has a national holiday for this tailor's talents. He heads up to the king and the king, the queen, the princess, the courtiers, the servants and even the court hounds are all beside themselves with joy. How talented is this tailor? Is there no ends to his skill? And that little button everybody admires. 
but the tailor wears it. And he wears it, and wears it, and wears it, until he wears it out. And one night, he takes that wee button and places it down and looks at it. And looks at it long and hard. It's, it's almost nothing. The material's almost gone. There's, oh. And then the tailor looks at it one last time and thinks, yes, I can do something with this. And he cuts and he sews and he shapes. And what he makes from that button is a story. And that is the story I've just told you. The Tailor and the Button is a wee story that I actually found in, I believe it was a Duncan Williamson's book when I first started telling stories. And I love it. It's a simple and honest little tale. But it's a tale about never giving up. It's a tale about always driving forward and making the most of what you've got. So I absolutely adore that wee tale. Now, with me becoming a member of the Alberta Podcast Network, which is powered by ATB, it gives this podcast this lovely kind of feel of, hey, I've become professional. Um, I like it. I just, I'm so grateful because it just feels nice that, you know, what I'm doing here and just the wee bit of hard work somebody has kind of noticed already. One of the things about the ATB is they actually have their Entrepreneur Centre, a place that I've visited. And it's fantastic because if you're starting or setting up a business, the ATB's Entrepreneur Centre, it's just a great place to go. You know, they hold a variety of workshops and seminars and networking opportunities. So here's me talking about kind of a lonely life being a performer or even being self-employed. You know, sometimes you might just feel that you're slogging away by yourself. But this place is a great place to go down to because they've always got something on. Uh, Workshops to help you learn new stuff, seminars, there's networking as I've said. So you get to meet like-minded people, entrepreneurs and people that can give you some guidance because they even have a mentoring system down there. So if you are a new business or setting up, if you're looking for some guidance or even some workshops to give you a little bit of an idea about aspects of your business, head down to the Entrepreneur Centre, the ATB Entrepreneur Centre, and just get some advice. Speak to the guys there because they're fantastic. You can learn more at atb.com forward slash Entrepreneur Centre. So that is the ATB Entrepreneur Centre. Highly recommend it, and I use it myself quite often. In fact, I think um, I've missed one yesterday simply because my schedule conflicted, but I try and go to some of these workshops at least once a week, if not every fortnight, because they've usually got something on that's really important and really interesting to your business. So I highly recommend it. atb.com forward slash entrepreneur centre. And let's just keep in that uh, theme of performers and all the challenges that face performers. And with that in mind, let's move on to my book recommendation because it's just inspired me to recommend a book that I absolutely adore. With all the challenges and fun and all the things that face performers, there's a book that I read that certainly was very helpful and inspiring because this is a book from a wonderful performer and it is available on Audible. Because do remember... We do offer a free audio download and 30-day free trial at Audible. And if you go on to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Bothy Podcast, you can take advantage of that free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial. They've got over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle or MP3 player. So well worth looking at, but my book recommendation for this podcast is Amanda Palmer's The Art of Asking. Now on the Audible site, it is $37.71. So again, a great one to get for your first free book because that's saving you nearly $40. But you know what? This is a great book. Amanda Palmer, if you don't know who she is, she is... uh, She's lovely. 
She's just an amazingly passionate and energetic performer. You know, as I said, she's lovely like I knew her. I've never met her in my puff, but she just comes across as being this really driven and passionate woman. She's really focused on her art and focused on artists. Her drive is to bring art into the mainstream. The book talks about her beginnings as a human statue and musician moving into the Dresden Dolls and then working her way up using the patron system, all those sort of things. And she has just done so well. She's done TED Talks. She's done seminars. She married uh, the wonderful author, I think I've recommended one of his books, Neil Gaiman. You know, and all I think about is, wow, what a team. You know, when I read about him and read about her, I'm just like, that's just amazing. But Amanda Palmer, I think is wonderful. Every time she's in Edinburgh, I miss her. In fact, I noticed she's performing in Edinburgh later this year. And again, I'm over in Calgary and this is where I'm going to be. So I did post on their Facebook for her to get her backside to Calgary and perform. Because I keep missing her every time she does it. But The Art of Asking is a great book for performers or for anyone. It's based around the very basic principle of just asking for help, asking for money, asking for support, having people around you, having a network, and it's great to read. So in the theme of this actual show, that is the perfect book for me to recommend. Amanda Palmer's The Art of Asking, available on Audible. And do remember, www.audibletrial.com forward slash bothy podcast to take advantage of that 30-day free trial and your free audiobook download. So there you have it. That is my book recommendation for this episode of the Bothy Storytelling Podcast. But what follows the book recommendation? We're moving swiftly on. We're heading straight in to our podcast recommendation for this episode. And you know what? I'm part of the Alberta Podcast Network, so I'm going to introduce you to some of the other titles that are out there, some of the other great podcasts. And there's one that I've been listening to and I thoroughly enjoy it, is I Have Some Notes. Now, I'm just going to read you what they've written on their page. Gives you a bit of an idea. So each month on I Have Some Notes, self-proclaimed movie experts Colin McIntyre and Greg Beaver Take a movie that sucked but had potential and put it through a vigorous podcasting notes process to try and turn it into a blockbuster. It's a great podcast. Basically, they they say it all there. They take the movies and they basically rewrite them to help them improve. Although, I've got to be honest, guys. Oh, what can I say? You know, how can you touch Top Gun? How can you touch the ultimate danger zone movie? But these guys have done it. They've gone through some of the great movies. Uh, Pacific Rim, Daredevil. Oh my God, I've just noticed Daredevil with, uh, what's his face? Ben Stiller. Yeah, that needed a lot of work. That, I, I need to listen to that episode. I, I didn't notice that one there. Uh, they've touched Die Hard, you know, Moonraker. It's <laughs> I think Tom Cruise gets a, a harsh go in this sometimes, but to be honest, so he should. It's Tom Cruise, jeez. Um, you know, Rogue One, they've touched the Star Wars franchise, they've done it all. They've they've, they've gone in there with some heavy-hitting films, and they've spoken about them and seen how they could improve them. So I highly recommend I Have Some Notes. Uh, available, if you go to the Alberta Podcast Network site, you will be able to find that and basically look that up. That is my podcast recommendation for this episode. And this episode is coming now to an end, ladies and gents. I'm going to keep this one short and sweet. Just to introduce you to the Alberta Podcast Network, introduce you to the new things that are happening here, all powered by the ATB. This is fantastic and exciting, and it's going to help take this podcast to an absolute new level. But I hope you have enjoyed listening to this episode of the Bothy Storytelling Podcast. Do remember, we do have our Patreon page, so get on over there, have a look at the reward tiers, sign up, become a patron of this podcast, and that will help me on another level improve, develop, and grow it. 
But with that in mind, I hope you've enjoyed and I hope to hear you all in the next episode of the Bothy Storytelling Podcast. <laughs>